We're here with Justin Hunt, uh, a director of acclaimed films such as American Meth, Absent, and The Speed of Orange. And today we're going to be discussing his latest project, Dot Triple X, a documentary. And uh, we just have some questions for Justin, and uh, I think it's going to be a good time. So, Justin, my first question for you is why is the subject of pornography addiction important? Oh, well, there are. Uh there's a multifaceted answer to that. I, I think the reason that I, that I took this topic on, to be completely frank with you, was because of a conversation I had with a really good friend of mine um, who um, was a woman that I went to high school with. and She was married to an engineer, um, had a wonderful family, and um, when she told me that she got divorced and we got into a conversation, she started telling me why, and, and because of you know her husband's addiction to pornography. It was just it was too much, and the magnitude of his uh, addiction was too much. And so, um, as she started describing that to me, it really bothered me how how naive I was to the power of of that addiction. Um, and that conversation was about five years ago. I was still working on Absent, and then of course, due to time constraints, I, I started working on the Speed of Orange. But in the back of my mind, this issue was always kind of burning. Um, and it, it also planted the seed that it really germinated over that period of time watching and observing how bad that issue really was. And the thing about it is, you know, you can look at it in a very minimalistic way of, oh, it's, you know, it's just something people look at or do in their spare time and it doesn't really affect anybody. But if you zoom out a little bit and you really look at the issue, it's starting to affect the foundation of the family unit. It's starting to kind of rattle the... Um, the system of society and culture, and 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 uh, we're losing the the whole family aesthetic. Um, you know, there's there's like I said, it's a multifaceted answer, but it's coming at us from all sides. But I think because of what it is and where it happens, which is in the privacy of our own home, it really goes under the radar, and it happens behind closed doors. And so, um, you know, it, it's 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 like. It's like a fungus. It just needs a dark, dank place to grow, and it will continue to do so until we kind of shed some light on it and, and see if we can't do something to fix it up. Cool. Cool. And, uh, and, uh, and doing and my research on this, on this, after I heard about you doing this movie, I, I decided to start looking into it and learning more. And what I kind of found was is this is it's so prevalent across all of society. There, it, it, it touches everyone, um, but there, there seems to be it seems to be socially acceptable to view pornography. But at the same time, a lot of shame associated with the viewing of pornography. Can you talk about that duality a little bit? Sure. I, I think in the Western world, that's that's definitely the case, especially here in the United States. Um, that's the irony of it. Is I mean, look at everything. It's sex, 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 sex in your face all the time, how dare you look at it? And it's kind of like, wait a second, we're, we're creating our own problem here and then chastising the people that, that, are, that are abusing it. Um, that's, it's a little different in different cultures, which is why I'm getting a global perspective on, um, on the topic in the film, talking to people from Australia, Scotland, the UK, Germany, France, um, to get a, a more global feel of it. But, you're absolutely right. It, it really is kind of, it's a conundrum that we're creating by the fact that we push it so hard, especially here in the U.S. I mean, you know as well as I do, Brian, we've talked about it a lot of times, um, how it's so absurd how much, you can't drive down the road without seeing it on a billboard or, you know, seeing it in magazines or seeing it on television. And, you know, it's even used to push things that have absolutely nothing to do with sex. I'm not sure what you know, sex has to do with buying a domain name, yet GoDaddy, you know, really pushes sexuality to buy a domain name. Um, right, right. You know, I, I think that it really connects to the core wiring of who we are as human beings. Temptation has been around, obviously, from the very beginning. Um, and, you know, if you can make money by using that, you know, this is this is a capitalistic society, so people do that. They, they use what they can to, to push their product and make their money and Sex sells and everybody's buying. All right. 
Um, but just another another thought that came up that uh, while you were saying that is I think there's a big stereotype that uh, pornography is uh, a male driven male, uh, the addiction to it is a male driven event. Um, have you found that to be true, or are you seeing other things? Well, I'm learning other things. Um, you know, statistically, we're at a point now where uh, you know one in four sex or one in four addicts, pornography addicts, are women. So 25% of the addicted population uh, are women, um, which is extremely surprising. Um, and you know, I think we had a statistic in the trailer for the film that 17% of women admit that they have looked at pornography at work. Yeah. And so, you know, that's a pretty telling statistic. Um, so, it, you know, I think obviously men make up the majority of addicts. Um, I think that's where, you know, the porn industry really markets is to men, but I, there, there's a growing market in women, so I think that that's probably going to change a little bit where they go after women a little bit more. Um, you know, like last year, for example, um, was the disappointing fact that three of the top five selling books in the world last year, three of the top five were the Fifty Shades of Grey thing, which I don't care who you are, that's that's a, a form of pornography um, in, in, you know, in that content. And so it doesn't necessarily have to be a movie or an X-rated magazine you're looking at. It's just um, it's more sexuality and, and people trying to hoard as much as they can of that. Yeah. So I think you've think given a good do. basis of why you're doing this. Uh, now let's say someone who's struggling with this, uh, pornography addiction is watching this right now. What, what would you say to them? Well, I think the first thing that needs to happen is that, you know, that person needs to recognize the fact that they very well could have a problem um, and in a clinical sense. Um, you know, pornography, uh, the, the chemicals that are released in the brain, and this is something that we'll go into a little bit more in the movie, but the, the chemicals that are released in the brain are basically take the same neurological path as um, the chemicals that are released when a person does drugs, cocaine, or heroin. Uh, and so it really can have the same addictive effect on a person. And so, you know, it, it's easy to become a product of our environment where we can say, well, it's okay because everybody else does it. But the, the true fact of the matter is whether you're a man or a woman, whether you're married or you're single, um, there's a very good potential that you have a problem. If it, I mean, and only you can answer that question of if it's something that um, you have a tolerance to that is affecting your life that you can't get away from, that you you know would hurt yourself to get. Um, you have to be realistic about the fact that you you might have a problem. Um, you're not alone in that, which I think is another big hurdle for people who. Um, you know, you see it with the meth film that we did, or even the fatherhood film. Um, the feeling of, of isolation, um, you know, only feeds into the addiction. So realizing that you're not alone is, is very important. So that's another thing I would encourage someone who may be struggling it to realize. And just to start taking it seriously and, and look at what can be done, start doing some research, reach out to people who are struggling with the same thing, um, get off the island, and... Uh, and um, you know, realize that something probably can and should be done about it if it's if it's having that much sway over your life. You know, and I, I appreciate you saying that because you know the absent movie spoke to me in that way, and uh, the way you brought out the subject really made me feel not alone because that's something that affected me a lot, and I think that's. Uh, a great thing to say about this subject too, uh, because I'm sure it is a very isolating thing. And starting this conversation, which I think is difficult, uh, starts to kind of tear that away for somebody struggling. And uh, I just think it's a really good thing that you're you're, you're doing this. Um, Thanks, Brian. I, I just want to say real quickly. First of all, I really appreciate you saying that, and I think that really is the power of the films. Um, you know, you've seen the other films, and hopefully, some people that might watch this have seen them as well. Um, you know, they're not to they're not to point a finger or to expose or to judge or to um, you know shine a negative light on anybody who's struggling with those things. It's to say, hey, this is out there, this is real, and there's a lot of people are dealing that are dealing with it. You're not alone, and let's let's all see if we can't make this better together. And I that's exactly what I want to do with this film. It's not to say, look, hey, if you're looking at pornography. You are a horrible person, and you're going to hell. It's it's hey, if you're doing it, there 
there's a lot of other people that are affected by it. Let's all try to figure out why this is so dangerous together and then see if we can't start to fix it together. So um, I think it, it is that, you know, knocking down the walls that surround us and make us feel isolated that, that makes this, hopefully this film so powerful and what made the other films powerful and effective as well. Right, and I think that's very important anytime you're talking about something as, you know, drug addiction, porn addiction, feeling, you know, uh, like have an absent father wound, all those things. And uh, anyway, I, just, I think you shed a good light on those kind of things. I look forward to seeing the final product of uh, .xxx. So, uh, moving on, you're currently running an Indiegogo campaign to raise uh, funds for visual effects for this movie. Uh, can you go into why you need uh, funding for that and the company you chose and uh, why you chose them? Well, the reason I'm raising funds is because I, unfortunately, am not independently wealthy and able to pay for these things on my own because sure. they cost a lot more money than people realize. Um, so we're doing the Indiegogo campaign. That's just one way that we're trying to raise that we're trying to raise money. I've got you know I've got about a hundred lines in the water trying to trying to draw in the, the, the capital that we need to, to get this film done. Uh, you know, Indiegogo is obviously one very popular way to try to raise money. Um, it's, it's, it's a finicky business trying to, trying to raise funds through that. Um, but, uh, you know, we've also, got, we've also got other ways to do it through our website, you know, donation buttons. Um, we're working with a, an organization called Documentary Educational Resources, which provides a 501c3 umbrella. Um, and uh, you know, if you need that tax write-off, we're doing that. Um, and then we're, I'm doing a kind of a fundraising tour in April through New Mexico, which is my old stomping grounds, to see if we can raise some funds there. But you know, right now, Indiegogo is what we're really trying to focus on because it really is a powerful tool. Um, if you can, if you can get in the mainstream there and get it exposed to people, um, you can do you can do pretty well. I saw a film I think that raised eight hundred and thirty-eight thousand dollars on there the other day, which Wow. That would be nice. Yeah, sure. nice. <laughs> <laughs> so um, you have a push coming up tomorrow uh, for the Indiegogo campaign specifically, uh, a halfway dollar. Yeah. Can you go into a little, uh, little bit more about that? Well, like I said, I mean, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. It's a, it's, a, it's a struggle to raise money on there because, number one, you know, people – don't just throw their money away on things, and, and there's a lot of there's a lot of other projects that are on there, um, be them film or art or technology or music or whatever, um, and we're really not where we need to be. I, we have a goal of eighty thousand just for the visual effects, and uh, you know halfway we should be at forty thousand, and unfortunately we're at about three. Um, and so what we're trying to do with Halfway Dollar Day is, if I understand the way the website works, is that the, the more energy you get on the site, the more donations and the more visits and those kinds of things, it kind of bumps you up in the algorithm of exposure and, and puts it in front of more people. So what we're trying to do with Halfway Dollar Day is, number one, make it to where people only have to give a dollar. And by doing that, you know, maybe if we can get, you know, 50, 60, 100, 200, one dollar donations, that will get us, and you can explain this a little bit better than I can even, That'll get us um, a little bit more into the uh, the general mainstream of of exposure and, and hits and donations and maybe that'll kind of you know up our chances of getting on the homepage or I think if you go to film and you browse the the film project like on page 24 and so yeah, yeah. you know maybe that'll bump us up into uh, I mean they have like success story portions they have. I mean, they've got all kinds of things. So I'm just hoping that the that the increase in energy will will help us get a little more exposure to, because everybody that's given to the project so far has been people that I went to high school with, or people that I've, you know, met, you know, out and about. I mean, just friends. Um, right. But I think, you know, I think if we can get it in front of the general public, that might help our chances of raising some funds a little bit. Right. right. And, and, and just to go a little bit more to what Indiegogo does is, you know, they want to push projects that are, you know popular and they're going to ultimately make them money and the way they judge that is donations quickly together um, tend, uh, will bump your project up in the algorithm, get it higher, more visible in the site, more likely to be in a mass email to people that, uh, that they've had and if uh, that's kind of what I think you're asking people to do is 10 a.m. wherever you are tomorrow, donate a dollar. Yeah. Just 
give a dollar, and your dollar will be not just a dollar. It will be a vote to get this project pushed up for people to view and uh, more eyes to see it and have a chance of making this film exactly what it needs to be. Right. That's exactly right. And, I mean, you know, we say every dollar counts, and it really does, but even more than, than just the monetary meaning of that is, is like you said, the, the exposure, I think, will, is really what we're going for with the dollar, um, even though I can use every dollar. Um, right. And so, you know, that, that is exactly what we're hoping for. And, and um, like I said, I, you know, I, I'm confident enough in the project and the material that's on there that I think, you know, if we can get it in front of that more general audience, then they'll start to see that we're, you know, we're really championing something that's of value and importance, and, and uh, maybe it'll get us where we need to be. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and there is also on the Facebook page, uh, uh, there is information about the Halfway Dollar Day and, and the Indiegogo campaign. If anyone wants to go check that out. Yeah, yeah. We've got we've got an event on there, and we've got the the link to the Indiegogo campaign. And and like you said, it's 10 a.m. wherever you are. So. If you're in Australia, you got a few hours, and it's 10 a.m. Or you know, we've got 20, 23 hours before we hit it here in Mountain Time. So you know, we're really just trying to give people a chance all day to hop on there. And I mean, it's a buck. Anybody can spare a buck. And you know, it's what seven billion people in this world. We can just get eighty thousand of them to give a dollar. We're in good shape. There you go. There you go. Um, and on your Indiegogo campaign, you have some perks. And you have some really uh, interesting. Uh, uh, armbands and mouse pads that you've had made up. Do you, do you just kind of want to show those people? Yeah. yeah, let me show you that. So, well, I, we've kind of continued to, to modify this campaign as we go. And, and uh, you know, I started out with the $25 thing, and then we went, we've got, a, I think, a 10 and a 5, and now, you know, we'll have the 1. But some of the perks that we've got, like, we wanted to, uh, we wanted to kind of give this, this whole film, like, we have the absent army thing, um, with absent, we wanted to try to give this thing kind of a mantra, and that that's be better. And we've got the hashtag be better. And really, what that means in the film is, at the end of the day, it's you know we we can be better people. We can be better husbands and wives, and men and women, and, and be better in our choices. And, and hopefully, that's what we'll do. So we've got the little little be better wristband. I don't know if you can see that or not, but we've got that with the uh, with the dot xxx moving. If nothing else, that's a conversation starter. All right. Why do you have taught XXX on your wrist? So that's, I mean, that's a perk for, for giving. Um, we've got these little, we've got these mouse pads that go out, and, uh, you know, this is just one of the statistics from the film. And, um, and actually, it's from, it's from uh, one of the graphic designers, and I'd love to get into, you, into that with you with uh, why we're using animators and graphic designers. But the mouse pad is another perk. Um, and then, of course, you know, you, there's perks where you get, all of the films I've done, there's Absent, and we've got The Speed of Orange, which is the film that I that is coming out uh, in May. So, I mean, we've even got, you know, um, dinner with me at a, at a screening and hotel accommodations. We've got just about everything you can ask for on there. So we're trying what, everything we can, buddy, to, uh, to get people amped up and give them some swag and see if they will throw a little money our way so we can get this thing done. Cool. And, and you did bring up a good point. Uh, why are you using animators, graphic designers for this movie, and when your other movies haven't necessarily had them? Well, here's what I've noticed about this particular topic: the films that are coming out about pornography, or they're either trying to take on the industry, which is a very difficult task. That's a big mountain to climb. It's a 13 billion dollar a year industry in the U.S. And then on top of that, or other than that. It's the films are, you know, some kind of tongue-in-cheek, you know, basically retrospective, making a mockery of old porn stars and what they're doing now. And it's kind of sad, really, because I, you know, maybe the maybe the adult film stars think that it's some kind of, I don't know, walk down memory lane for them or or something. But it's really just it seems to me like it's filmmakers kind of making fun of these old porn stars and. Either way, the films are absolutely saturated with provocative images that, you know, scenes from being on the set of a porn or clips from old porn films or, you know, just anything, just images, still frames. And what I've learned in dealing with this and, and, and coming to understand just how powerful this addiction is, is those triggers are they're killer for, for people that are dealing with this addiction. They're absolutely... Uh, devastating to people who who 
um, on a daily basis fight the battle of, of not being tempted by, by provocative imagery and pornography and things like that. So the concept that I'm, that I'm using for this film is, okay, we're going to tell the story about how dangerous porn addiction is, but we're not going to fill it full of triggers for people that makes it impossible for them to watch. Um, you know, we, you and I have talked about this as well. It's you know, it's like me saying, "Hey, Brian, I think you really have a drinking problem. Let's go have a beer and talk about it." Right. right. It doesn't do anybody any good. Right, and so, right. so what I'm trying to do in the creative challenge that we're facing with this film is, how do we tell this story and keep it visually entertaining and engaging, but not fill it full of things that make it impossible for an addict or a struggling, you know, an active addict or a former addict that still struggles with temptation making it impossible for them to watch without going and acting out, as they, as they say. And so, um, you know, so we're bringing in animators, we're bringing in motion graphics people, we're bringing, we're hoping to bring in, um, you know, visual effects people. And there are some really talented people that want to be on board. Um, you know, one of those is, is a company called Wolf and Crow, and they did all the visual effects for Tron, and they did the visual effects for... Um, the, the, the Twilight films and these amazing films and they've got some great concepts but they cost money okay. and so that's why we're trying to raise the money is, is, to, is to handle these visual challenges uh, and make a film that's, that's safe for people that are dealing with this issue to watch without making it worse. Right. I think, I think that's very important all to the points that you said and, uh, and I really appreciate the effort you're going through to actually uh, Make a make film a that, film is, that viable is viable for an addict to watch. Well, not, not only an addict, Brian, but also like a family. Yeah. Okay? I mean, yeah, there you go. We're talking about the average age that a that a person starts searching for porn in the U.S. now is ten years old. Wow. So we need to create something where I mean, you have you have children, I have children, where we can sit down and say, okay, son, let's watch this, or or your daughter, let's watch this. And let's talk a little bit about it, but you don't have to worry about, you know, covering their eyes so that they aren't seeing the provocative imagery from the set of a porn film. And so, you know, it's not just to make it easier on the addicts, but it's also to make something that maybe it's a tool we can use to nip this in the bud and have, you know, be a catalyst for conversation with our children of, all right, this is, this is not where you learn about, you know, intimacy and romance and things like that. Right. So I think that's just as important as, as taking the triggers out for, for addicts as well. Now that's a really good point that I hadn't thought about. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, my son's two and a half. Ten's not very, not far, very far, away. far away. Well, I'll, let me tell you what. I'll tell you a, a quick story. Um, there's a, there's a, a really good friend of mine who went to high school the same time I did in a, in a different town right next to mine, and we've been friends our entire lives. And... Um, I was talking to her, she lives in Santa Fe, and I was setting up this fundraising thing in Santa Fe, and she wrote me and she said, anything I can do to help, let me know, and here's why. She goes, she goes my daughter was, was with some friends, and they were just looking on the internet, and by absolute accident, they stumbled onto a porn site through an ad that, that popped up. So okay. they're looking at this site, and the next thing she knows, her daughter is talking to a man and this man is chatting with her, and by the time that she realizes this is happening, the man has already set up a meeting to meet her daughter in Santa Fe, and in person, her daughter, Brian, is 10 years old. Wow. Just like that, man, just like that, it happened. And so wow. to think that, you know, we don't need to start having this conversation right away, we're naive if we think that kids at that age don't know what's going on and aren't being exposed to this kind of stuff and how quickly it can go bad. Well, and I, I think that's I think all that's the more reason to have parents a, a good tool to start the conversation uh, in a safe place because if, if stuff like that's happening to your friend, it's that's not nice that it is. I'm sure it's happening all over. Well, and also, too, that's the whole point of, like, talking about how it affects the brain and how it affects the individual, not just the family and society, but the individual because if you've got a father of two or three kids and, and, he's, and he's fallen victim into this addiction, he needs to realize, too, how valuable his role is and he needs to, to understand how that's affecting his life, how that's going to affect his son. Um, it, it, there's just there's so much more to it than porn is bad, it's everywhere, you've got to stop. It's not just that. That's not the point of the film. 
It's right. just to get people to realize just how ensnaring this issue is. Wow, that's, that's wow. Yeah, just and the more I the more I look into this, the more I'm just amazed. I had to. Have to and uh, uh, I just I think what you're doing is great. Well, I think, uh, I think that's the power of the addiction, Brian, is that so many people don't realize this isn't like this isn't like a meth addiction. It's not like a um, alcoholism. It's not like anything that we're used to seeing because we don't see this. This happens in the privacy of someone's home or in their office when everybody's gone home. Yeah, and yeah. so we don't really know about it, but the power of it and the fact that we don't know about it is what makes it so so dangerous. Wow. Um, okay, so you have you mentioned earlier there are various ways to contribute besides any good campaign. Uh, how can people find out about us? Well, like I said, we've got um, we've got a splash page up for the website right now. The website should be like completely done in the next week or ten days. But you can go onto the website, which is dot 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 xxxmovie dot com, and there's a donate page or a donate button there. Um, we've also got um, you can go to der dot org, and um, we'll have a link on the website shortly. But you can go to der dot org and look up dot xxx, and you can contribute there, and that's where you can get the tax free letter. Um, I mean, you can contact me directly. And we can take, you know, credit card donations over the phone. You can send a check. Um, we've got the Indiegogo thing. We've got investment opportunities. If you want to load in and actually own a portion of the film, just about anything that a person wants to do, we've got an option for them. And, and really, all they have to do is reach out to me, and, and we'll answer any question they have. Very good. Very good. Very good. Well, Justin, that's all the uh, uh, questions that I had for you, and I think we covered a lot of ground. Is there anything you want to add before we go? No, I, I just think that, um, you know, the, the, like I said, the real power of, of pornography addiction is the fact that nobody really knows that much about it. Right. But when you look at the fact that, you know, we have about a 60% divorce rate in the U.S., and 58% of those divorces have one person that cites obsessive interest in porn as the reason, then we're looking at about one in three marriages in the U.S. that ends because of pornography addiction. That's a very, very serious uh, problem. And so I would just encourage people to understand what it is that we're trying to do with the film, um, the, 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 the influence we can have if we can get the film done properly. And, you know, obviously it's just like anything else. The, the more that you can put behind it, the better the product is going to be, the better the product the better the, the distribution and the exposure and the promotion and all those things, um, you know, the film will get done one way or another, but it, it needs to be done the right way. And I think when people start to really realize how powerful this addiction is and how much we need to start to go to bat against it, um, hopefully that will fire them up and, and inspire them to, to jo you know, to join us, to join part, to join us in what we're trying to do and do it as a community effort to, you know, it's not Justin Hunt's doing this movie. It's we're all kind of in this together because we're all suffering the consequences uh, of these decisions that are being made. So, you know, I, I guess that's about as close as I can get to begging people to jump in and help. So, <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah, that's what I got. Well, I think you've made a really solid case. Um, so uh, this video is going to be archived on the .xx uh, movie YouTube channel uh, for anyone to view and pass around later if they want. Uh, and we'll also uh, we'll upload a copy of the trailer there as well for people to view and pass that around because I think that trailer. Oh, thanks. Thank you. Um, and uh, I guess just real quick to let people know if they want to just kind of keep an an eye on on uh, what's happening and keep their finger on the pulse of this. Um, April 7th in Santa Fe, we're having a fundraising event. Um, April 9th in Albuquerque, New Mexico, and April 12th in Farmington, New Mexico. We'll, I'll be doing a, a tour. So if they're in that area or near that area, we'd love to have them come out and, and hear more about it and support the film. Very good, Justin. Hey, Justin. Well, thanks for your time, and uh, uh, let's, let's go get it. Yeah, let's do it, buddy. I appreciate your help. Thanks, Brian. All right, man. We'll talk soon. All right, buddy. Bye. Bye.